and there is nothing to be done is a print, um, print number 15 actually, out of about 80 some prints in a series by Francisco de Goya uh, called the Disaster of War series. Uh, this is pretty some, some pretty dark subject matter in art, uh, some powerful pieces. He is probably one of the most interesting and powerful artists we have in our timeline. And he is a Spanish artist during the Romantic era. So in terms of context, uh, you see, I just reiterate that it's part of 82 images. Um, but his art series dealt with Spain and the occupation of Spain by the French under the leadership of Napoleon. And not only just the occupation, but then the reaction of the Spanish citizens and their their mindset also at the very end. And, and I think in the next slide, I'll talk to you specifically about first half of the series, second half, and then um, you know, kind of discuss the differences and how the series progresses. So what happened is Napoleon basically, who is in control of France, um, makes a agreement with King Charles IV, who is the king of Spain at the time, and he convinces King Charles to let the French army into Spain to help Spain basically invade Portugal. But, you know, it's kind of that case of having your fingers crossed behind your back when you make a promise, where Napoleon makes a promise, but he has no intention of following through. And in fact, instead, Napoleon's going to go in and take over Spain. And that's exactly what he does. And he puts his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, on the Spanish throne. And, you know, famine ensues, uh, war breaks out, and you know, the Spanish try to pose an uprising against the French, but that just leads to the slaughter of Spanish citizens. Uh, so Goya is looking at all of this through the lens of, you know, being Spanish, but because he's this incredibly talented painter, he is appointed the court painter of Joseph Bonaparte, this French, you know, brother of Napoleon, who is now ruling his, you know, Goya's homeland of Spain. So it's a tricky situation to be in. Uh, and so he is, of course, making art for Joseph Bonaparte and doing his role as the court painter. But then on his own, kind of hidden away from everyone seeing and, and not letting anyone know. He is making art about this experience, definitely, of, and of course, biased according you know, to Spain. And so these prints were published about 35 years after Goya's death when you know, family and that felt it was safe and okay to publish his views on the situation. And then I go through on this slide the three different sets of plates. The first ones were the effect of the conflict, uh, the middle of the 80, the effect of famine on people, and then the last plates in the series of 82, just the mindset of the Spaniards you know, being uh, just under Spanish or under French rule for so long, it affects your you know, mental state of being. And then the other thing I have on this uh, contextual slide is just the technique. It goes through a lot of different phases. And so part of it is he starts off with etching. You know, so you etch the metal plate, and that includes, like we talked about with Rembrandt, wax and carving into the wax and dipping it in acid. Then he does something called dry point, which is a term I would like you to know, where you then go on and scratch additional lines on the surface and then pour ink on the surface and run a uh, paper through a press where you're pressing the paper into that metal plate that has not only been etched, but it has been dry point etched as well afterwards by scratching additional lines on the surface. It gives you a really interesting texture to take you know, yourself through those different um, you know, etching and then dry point etching. And that it's going to give our series on this really kind of intense subject a greater grit 
and you know you feel more the intensity of the experience whether it be famine or the mental state of being or you know the slaughter of spanish citizens those lines that you see in black and white really help convey those emotions so content wise this is the image that college board wants you to be able to recognize and you have a man in the kind of foreground here and notice that his figure is depicted almost without lines at all just the outline of him for the most part so his body comes across as like he's wearing white and so for a lot of people he reminds um, them of a jesus figure a christ figure or martyr there's a there's a term called alter christus meaning other christ and i think that applies here you know clearly he's not jesus from christian faith but he is a martyr nonetheless for the Spaniards. He is depicted almost like a Christ-like figure. And I think that's what they mean by Alter Christus, a figure who is depicted as if he or she is Christ. Uh, he is standing there tied to this cut off pole, kind of as a reference a little bit too to the crucifixion cross. He's blindfolded. Um, you know his fate just by looking at him, but it's clarified by having another person in the foreground who has already been shot. He's just on the ground with blood and been shot in the head. And off to the right, and you might miss it at first, you have these the only like clear horizontal element in the entire print here are those gun muzzles, three of them. You don't see the French soldiers, but you see the guns. And so your focused attention on the martyr, because for Goya, that is who is important here. But it is important to also know what the threat is, and that's determined by the, mus the, the guns. And then also in the background, you can see a little bit of um, some of the French soldiers on the right, and then more prisoners on the left who clearly are about to be executed. And then here is a painting that Goya has done, which is about the same subject, an incredibly famous painting. And in fact, I'm surprised this isn't one of your images. Um, similar to what you see in the print, but this one's in color because it's an oil on canvas. Uh, it's interesting to contrast the one in color versus the one in black and white but the subject is the same. So I wanted you to see this so you could uh, recognize it just in case that it shows up on your AP test. But again, by the same artist, uh, Francisco Goya. And then here are, uh, coming up here in a second, are some other ones. Uh, one on the right is very famous called The Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters. And then the one on the left, I love it. It's a great piece called Saturn Devouring His Children. And he paints the one on the left after he, like when in his elderly years, when he basically had shut himself up in his farmhouse, painted all the walls black around him, and then painted these type of monstrous paintings on the walls, uh, depicting his mental state of being and also the fact that he was unwell, he had gone deaf. And so it's just um, a tormented man really at the end of his life. Um, formal quality and function. Function definitely is narrative, you know, narrative series, history, um, for sure, I would put that. And for me, there's no other choice for formal quality other than like texture. And the texture with the lines and the, you know, the graininess of it helps to convey the emotion and the devastation and then also the value in the image value meaning that light and dark contrast because all you have basically is light and dark contrast so it's going to emphasize certain areas and it's going to you know um, highlight certain features that goya wants you to take a look at uh, so that's what i would use for formal quality so again, we're in the Romantic era. Uh, I will talk about that in class more so that you have a better idea of what that means. 
But Goya is one of the most famous romantic artists, and this series is a powerful showing of his homeland of Spain under the duress of the French coming in with Napoleon and taking over.